indeed we begin with breaking news tonight out of Montcole, West Virginia, about 30 miles south of Charleston, which is the capital city of West Virginia, there has been an explosion. It was this afternoon at the Upper Big Branch South Mine. It has left seven miners dead. At least another 19 miners are unaccounted for. One injured miner is reportedly in intensive care tonight, and the Charleston Area Medical Center says it is preparing for more patients. Rescue efforts reportedly in full effect this hour as family members gather for news at the nearby Whitesville Elementary School. Now this mine is operated by Performance Coal Company. Performance Coal Company is a subsidiary of a larger company that's called Massey Energy. Massey is actually the largest coal producer in central Appalachia. Five rescue teams from both Massey and Conso Energy are on the scene, as well as from the West Virginia Office of Miners Health Safety and Training. Now an engineering consultant told the Associated Press tonight that the Upper Big Branch South Mine has extra oxygen stashed on escape routes underground. They also reportedly have airtight refuge chambers that are supposed to be able to keep trapped miners alive for up to four days if they are underground and can't get out. Joining us now by phone is Ken Ward Jr. Ken Ward Jr. is a reporter uh, with the Charleston Gazette. Mr. Ward, thank you very much for your time tonight. Thanks for having me. What can you tell us about the latest on the rescue efforts right now? Uh, well, we, we can't tell you very much at all about the rescue efforts because we're not getting that sort of information out of the Department of Labor or out of the state of West Virginia. We know that there are, are nine uh, rescue teams. These are highly trained, very well equipped um, special teams uh, that would be able to go underground and search and try to find any survivors. Um, we know that they are on on site, but we, we haven't been told yet whether any of them have actually entered the mine and gone underground. Uh, that would require, uh, before they would do that, some some reasonable assurance that they that, that the conditions in the mine, the, the gas levels, the ventilation was such that, that they weren't expecting a, a follow-up uh, blast of some sort. Um, but, you know, the t time is everything in these situations, and, and we're not hearing much confirmed information about whether or not the, the rescue teams have actually entered the mine and are, are, are actively searching for these uh, the other 19 workers yet. Do you have any further information on what may have caused this explosion, how large the explosion was, uh, and, and if they're able to identify the actual, whether there's any further risk of additional explosions now? Um, uh, we, um, we don't know um, much of anything at all about what would have caused it. it it would have been uh, uh, either a methane gas explosion or a coal dust explosion. We don't have enough information to say which, or it could have been a combination of the two. Um, we do know that it, w it was apparently a fairly sizable explo ex explosion. My colleague Catherine Gregory is, is, is on the scene down there in Montcalm, and uh, witnesses have described to her smoke billowing out of the mine and, and uh, that there was a fire immediately afterward and, and, and those sorts of things. So it, it apparently was a fairly substantial explosion. Is there anything else that you can tell us just in terms of context for our viewers trying to imagine this scene. Again, we're still trying to get cameras on scene, still trying to get there. It's in a very uh, hard to get to area. Uh, is there anything else that you can tell us just to describe that setting or this environment, how large an operation this is and how hard it is to get to? Uh, well, th this is a very large uh, underground mine, um, though, you know, it's not something that if you drove past it, you would necessarily know that because it's, it's all underground. Um, uh, this is a quite a different sort of operation than the Sago mine that, that folks may remember from, from from four years ago. You know, unfortunately, these sorts of things uh, play out periodically here in, in the coal fields. Um, and, and, you know, the, the families are, are rushed to a church or a school and, and um, uh, kind of sit there and wait to find out what's what's become of their loved ones. Um, and, you know, uh, we had the Sago and, and Aracoma disasters in 2006 and the Kentucky Derby disaster in 2006 and then Crandall Canyon in 2007, and, and the, the mining industry in, in Congress would, would have led us to believe that they had improved the safety of the industry such that these things wouldn't happen again. Um, but here we are in, in uh, 2010, uh, and we have 19 families that don't know if their loved ones are coming home, and we have seven families that, that are just experiencing the worst sort of horror that they could. 
Ken Ward Jr. with Charleston Gazette in Charleston, West Virginia, uh, giving us the latest um, and also just the brutal, brutal context of this disaster. Mr. Ward, thank you for your reporting. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Also joining us now by phone is the Democratic Senator from the state of West Virginia, Jay Rockefeller. Senator Rockefeller, thank you very much for giving us your time tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you. What are you hearing uh, about the accident so far and the rescue efforts? Can you add anything to what we know thus far? Uh, probably not a great deal. The, the, and I think that's important. I think it's incredibly important where you get these highly emotional, highly traumatized, highly professionally complex and very mysterious. What are the circumstances? What caused it? Lots of smoke, lots of traffic, everything clogged. Um, nobody able to move anywhere. It's very important not to say more than you actually know. Uh, I, I, if people tell me there are seven people dead and that's what they have, or that there's 21 or 28, depending upon who says it, who are still, uh, that's that being 49, still waiting uh, to, to see what happens to them, that makes me worry very deeply, primarily because it is underground. And under when, when I've been underground, in situations like that, or after that, um, it's 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 a really really scary situation. You don't know where you are. Uh, the dust uh, that Ken Ward was just talking about, the smoke that he was just talking about, disorients people. Uh, there are chambers, and I don't know whether Massey Coal has them or not, but they're required to uh, for oxygen breathing so that miners can go at every single. A step or cut in the mine, they can go into one of those, get an oxygen mine, and put that on, and it carries them for a long period of time. There are also um, wire ropes because people can't see; it's pitch black, and and smoke and, and panic and chaos. But they can hold on to that uh, wire and just follow the wire, and it'll eventually lead them out of the mine, or at least to where the elevator will come down and pick them up. But you, it's, it's, I think it's wrong at this point to speculate on more than we actually know. And I think what we have to concentrate, I'm going down tomorrow morning, and I think what the, you have to concentrate on is one, that it is a horrible time to be in the family or the circle of friends of a minor, either dead or in danger or in general. Secondly, and that you have to, that's where you have to put your main work uh, when you go down there. It's just into, into being with them, usually in churches, with preachers. Um, it's, it's, it's a very emotional, very powerful, very awful, um, and, and finally very Appalachian. And the second part is, is the professionalism of the um, rescue mine teams. People have no idea. These people train all the time. They have state competitions. They have county competitions. They have intercompany competitions, constantly training to be able to go in and rescue uh, people. But they have to know where, what the problem is. They have, to, they have to be able to see to get in. They have to be able to get down into the mine. Maybe the man trip or the, 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 the vehicle in which you get into the mine has been burned or maybe the, the shaft on the way down is not operating. So we're working right now in a world of mystery and tremendous human tragedy. Hopefully things will begin to sort themselves out. But um, I think the great mistake now is to try to speculate on what might be. What we know is bad enough. And if it's what well, we hear, this will be the worst um, uh, disaster since Farmington in the early 70s. And as Ken Ward said, this is something that is in the, in the sadness of, um, of all the glory of West Virginia characteristics and fighting and climbing hills all the time. This is the, this is the tragic part. Senator Jay Rockefeller of West Virginia, uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight. The whole country uh, is pulling for those West Virginians in that mine tonight and for, and for their families. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Today's tragedy in West Virginia comes just hours after the complicated nature of mining disaster rescue made front page news around the world. It was in northern China today that 115 miners were rescued after being trapped underground for more than a week. Those miners had accidentally breached an old mine shaft that was filled with water. 
water. The miners survived their ordeal underground by eating sawdust and tree bark and by drinking the floodwaters. Some even used their belts to suspend themselves from the mine shaft wall, trying to avoid accidentally falling into the water and drowning while they were asleep. Rescue workers spent eight days drilling holes and pumping water out of the mine. They then used rubber rafts to pull the first survivors out of that mine last night. 38 miners are said to be still trapped in that mine in northern China right now. Rescue efforts continue tonight. As here in America and West Virginia, we faced our own underground mine disaster and rescue effort again. As Senator Jay Rockefeller of West Virginia just told us, one that, although we do not know for sure, could be the worst disaster uh, in mining since the early 1970s. Joining us now is Tony Oppergard. He's a former prosecutor of mine safety violations and a former federal mine official in the Clinton administration. Mr. Oppergard joins us by phone now on short notice. Um, Mr. Oppergard, thanks very much for your time. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, we are told this was an explosion. We don't know if it may have been a uh, methane gas explosion, a coal dust explosion. Um, what particular challenges would, uh, would that pose for rescuers? What does that mean to the rescue effort? 